four string versus five string bass. What's the deal? Today we're going to talk about the four string and the five string bass and find out what's best for you and just the ins and outs of the two differences. And people, there's a big controversy over who plays what, you know. So, you know, the biggest argument is Jocko only needed four strings. Well, guess what? You're not Jocko. So go ahead, play the five string or the four string, whatever you prefer. And they're both, the ability is in both of them to get the job done. But in my opinion, the five string bass stands tall and is my pre preferred instrument. As you can tell, the five string Fender Squire jazz bass. And it is, it's all I need. Six string bass, I don't see the need for six string bass unless I was a big solo artist or unless I was a big solo, bass solo player and you know playing a lot of melodies and stuff like that then you can step down step out and get the six string bass which ha offers the high C um, just a lot of higher notes there a larger register but with the five string I'm playing that low end and this is this is where I want to be you know that low end is what we do and here with the five string you've got even more of a lower end no more having to tune, tune down a half step or anything like that to get that low fat bottom you've got it right here it's all right here so that's why I prefer the five string bass I'm not um, restricted from playing certain low notes I'm able to just drop that sucker down there sometimes the low B string the Hertz the frequency is a lot less so it's harder to be heard it's a little harder to distinguish songs that are actually using that low B string or those notes in that lower from the E down that lower register they're harder to um distinguish but you can do it over time you get a little better at it and you can hear it and just what feels right and when you learn your music theory you be able to figure out yeah most likely this is an f sharp instead of an f or um you know or this is more like this is more than likely a d sharp as opposed to a d or a d um as opposed to a c or b so you know anything like I say music theory is just theory it's a way to communicate between artists so you know anything's possible or anybody can do anything in any song there's um, no rights and wrong there's just things that we've been adapted to like more and sounds better to our ear and all of that stuff so that's the five string and my advice is to just go get the five string nowadays there's more recordings that are actually using this low this low end you know it was Back in the day, it was the synthesizer was taking over that low end and kind of kicking us out of the out of that realm. But now with this five string, we're able to hang that in there and maintain it on our own without the help of a synthesizer or just let them do what they got to do. But, you know, you don't both want to be down at that end, but take matters into your hands, get the five string and use that low B. I mean, just listen. If you don't, you know, you don't, you're not using the low B string every single song. I mean, you don't have to use it every single song, but you've still got your four here. Now you've just enabled yourself to drop that lower end when needed, if needed. You know, you don't have to use it. You just got to be careful when you're playing the five string, though, that this low B string is, is constantly muted in some way, shape, or form because it will start rumbling all on its own if you're playing something up here and you're not muting that you're just letting that b string lay on its own it's going to start working up a bit of a vibration there and start rumbling for you and you you don't want that all the time so you just got to be conscious of that when you're playing you just got to keep that thing muted some way or another you know however you want to do it it's here here you know you can use this thumb i don't recommend that at all i prefer my thumb back here but you know this you can do that as well just as long as you're keeping that you're dampening that B string from vibrating that's all you need to do and I just practice it right here because then I can do it with all the strings the E string whatever strings I can just keep them down so they're not taking off because the E string has a potential to do the same but not as um, notable as that B string so just some things when you're playing the five string to be aware of when you do get that but you know I've got a four string as well. You know, I prefer, you know, the five string, but I like 
I like this one here for certain situations. I've got flat wounds on it here lately. I just put those on there and I like them a lot. These I've got the round wounds. The five string here are round wound strings. And you know, for certain situations, these this works better than that. So, you know, I'm not limiting myself, but if I find a song I've come across that it has actually playing, you know, D sharp lower and some of these tuned down songs, I'll just play the five string. I can do it right there and I'm not tuning around, messing around with that. And um, actually I have that one tuned down a half step and because the songs we do, we are limited just a little bit. The vocals, that helps them out when you tune down a half step because it's sometimes hard to belt out some of those higher ranges. So we tune down a half step. So I've got that one tuned down and I keep this one at reg regular 440. That one's tuned down to 430. And it just helps, um, just helps give you a little less worrisome and you know you're not tuning in the middle of the gig you, you've got it there but i do prefer my five string i've been playing this for probably i've had this thing i've had this for at least 10 years i can't remember exactly but i've had it for a good while and it has been solid and reliable and i've gotten used to this big neck i really like the big neck um there's a difference when you're playing it to the the neck you know, not all of them are this narrow, but this music man, Stingray, is um, Sterling Sub Bass Stingray. It's got a a narrow neck, which I'm getting used to, but it's just you know, it's um it's narrow. The strings actually have a further there's a distance there's a further distance between on the four string between the strings here. But after playing this for the last eight ten years, it um I've gotten used to the distance here. So it's a little bit to adapt to playing the four string because the gap is just a little bigger there. So, you know, it um it makes a difference there. As minute as that is, I mean, we're talking millimeters, it makes a big difference in um, the feel and everything. And that's actually 21 fret bass. So it has, you know, even, um, you know, my muscle memory playing this so much, I might be here, it's just off just a little bit. So it takes a little getting adapted to. So that's why I say get the five string, get well adapted to it, and make it your base of choice because you have, you're not limited. And when you do switch back and forth, there is a little bit of adjustment that needs to be done. And you just gotta be more of aware of where you're at on the scale and just how you gotta work a little more on the four string unless you've been practicing constantly on that four string. The it's not that way but if you're playing the five string and you're switching the four string there's adjustments you got to make and just things you got to be aware of so and on the five string bring the slapping and popping is a little bit different as well the four string seems a little better there's a little more gap in there so you've got um it's got a little more room to work with but after you practice it on this five string you'll get it down get it down So you just get used to it um, and any anything you're trying to do no matter which one you practice it on which one you prefer you can still get the same job done with each one so just practice make one you know commit to one of them practice it on that one and you'll do fine so definitely don't cut yourself short and just get the four string go ahead get the five string have that option to use the lower range and it just makes a big difference and in a lot of recordings today i'm finding that low b is so prevalent they're using it a lot so you've got that ability there you don't don't sell yourself short and just stick with the five string you can get everything done with that five string though you've got all these notes are here but the effect that this leaves you as opposed to this makes a big difference on your groove and that's what makes people move is the groove and that's what we're doing here so that right there depending on the situation that is a lot nicer than than that it makes a bigger difference and it in the song and the you know in the songs you'll find a lot of times they're using that higher octave for a certain reason and it sounds better than just laying it down low it gets kind of late boring there when you add that it gives it a little you know gives it a little more uplifting um movement there where the same effect is here if it's calling out for a lower lower deeper sound then that's where you want to be that low b so my recommendation
get the five string and make it work. It's the options there. It opens up the doors to a lot of other ideas and a lot of other things. So that's where I would go with it. So that's my opinion on the four string versus five string bass. And I, you know, I wouldn't change it for a minute. I mean, I've got the four string, like I say, I use that in certain situations, but this is my go-to right here. I really, um, I've enjoyed this for several years and I'm gonna keep on enjoying it for many years to come. And I might even upgrade to a newer bass. I'm looking at those Schecter um, five strings and they're pretty sweet. So you know, that might be my next step, probably will be my next step for sure. Um, but right now, this is getting it done and that's what I recommend, the five string over the four string yeah, I know Jocko only needed four strings, but we're not Jocko. So that's the deal. And if you got some value out of this, help me help you. Hit that like button. I'm Donald Witt with IWantToPlayBass.com. Jump over there, subscribe, become a member for free. Get your free ebook on setting your bases up. And there's also a 21-day bass tutorial there. Jump over there, get a ritual that'll get you a video every day of a bass lesson that'll help you improve by leaps and bounds. You know, you create that good habit 21 days usually get you there but you got to keep going with it. you can't 21 days and expect miracles you got to keep digging at it you got to look at the long haul stick with it and it'll get there and this is i want to play bass it's your youtube channel for everything bass subscribe here also hit that bell notification get in the loop don't miss a beat and i'll catch y'all on the flip flop in the next video so bye for now